Welcome viewers to another edition of Regional Review. My name is Jereen Hoff and I'm taking you on a quick trip through what's happened in the Comas region in the last couple of days. But first, today is Girlfriends Day. The Evening Review is a daily interview-based talk show that dissects and expounds on current affairs as they occur in Namibia. The show aims at reaching Namibians of all age groups who seek better understanding of the state of current affairs in the country. This show is broadcasted on NTV, 1up2.com and cross-shared on the following Facebook platforms, Namibian Sun and Namibia Media Holdings. The Evening Review focuses on interviews, latest news and up-to-the-minute current events. Contact evening at synergy.com.na Evening Review Unpacking today's pertinent issues. In our first news clip today, e-hailing service Lefa has just launched a new product called the Shuttle Butler. Micheline, now what it says has more. Everyone, welcome to the launch of the Lefa Butler. We appreciate your presence with us today in celebrating this major milestone. My name is Yalo Maongo and I am the marketing manager at Lefa Transportation Services. I see so many familiar faces here. So this is for the people that are like, I don't want to download the app or like I don't want you to know my information or I'm just my battery went low in the club you know and my phone went off or, or like make a sense sometimes it's like situations where you are really in trouble imagine you you are in a club with with a guy that you don't want to go home with sorry <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can ditch him you know you can ditch him you can leave them you can leave him there you can go in the club and you're like um can you please request a letter for me please and then you know so especially for us ladies um i think this will really come in very handy in situations when you want when you want to dodge these people it just um yeah <laughs> um really working on uh having our drivers available uh, during the the 3 a.m and the 4 a.m and that's we've incentivized our hours like we've increased the increase the fare prices so that it incentivizes the drivers to be out in the middle of the night. So our prices have now increased uh, during the night so that drivers are also motivated to, to, to stay out and make more money in the evening. And I think it has been working quite well lately, uh, not like before, because like before we get calls that no available driver, no available driver. So it's something that we are working on very much to be available for you guys. 24 hours if it's possible. Next up, the 7th Katatura Career Fair, organized by the Young Achievers Empowerment Group, proved to be a resounding success. Jemima and Dabele covered the story. The 7th Katatura Career Fair, organized by the Young Achievers Empowerment Group, proved to be a resounding success at the Habitat Research Center in Soweto. Aimed at high school learners from neighboring areas, the event provided a platform for students to interact with various companies, showcasing their services and a wide array of career options. Organizer Elizabeth Julume shares more. 
So Young Achiever is a youth-based organization here in Katutura, um, specifically in uh, Shandubala, that's where our center is. So Young Achiever is a youth-based organization which was started in 2004 by Dr. Pandu with a mission of instilling um, a sense of vision and mission in young people, especially here in the area of Katutura. So we are here today at the uh, Habitat Research Center with um, to host, hosting actually our seventh annual Katutura Career Fair which we are now doing like after after during it because during uh, we haven't hosted any uh, career fair uh, just after the COVID-19 the COVID so this is actually our first career fair after the whole pandemic area so our career fair here we have like different exhibitors and our main objective is just to give a platform to these young people to the schools that are here today because we invited various uh, schools within Katutura because something that we realized is that most of these schools they don't have access to most of the career fairs that actually take part in other areas such as town and all that so that's why we decided to host this career fair here. The event was well received by learners and proved to meet its goal of broadening their horizons. So the career fairs are held in town um, so the fact that this career fair is brought like um, to Katutra near our schools uh, it's very helpful because as she said, it's our second time uh, attending a career fair and we have been in high school for five years. So um, the fact that they did this is like really uh, helpful and we are really grateful for that. Jemai Mandebele, Vintuk. Higher Education Minister Ita Kanji Murangi last week inaugurated a crucial three-day tertiary education sector strategic engagement. Here, Jemai Mandebele submitted this clip. In the midst of many reforms and in the midst of changes, developments and challenges, many of which call on us to re-examine and institute proactive strategies and policies on some of these critical areas. One of those is teacher training. Teacher training. The admission requirements at tertiary level, that's two. Learners' requisite transitional knowledge, skills, and competences at different exit points. Proper placement of Tibet on our national qualification framework. Next, adapting and harnessing the fourth industrial revolution and other emerging technologies to optimize teaching and learning benefits. Employing effective strategies to deepen the acquisition of employability skills and reducing graduates unemployment. Up next, Tukna Secretary General has his say on the prevailing high electricity costs. Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress of Namibia, Utukna Mahongoro Kavihua, expressed concern over the prevailing high electricity costs. His comments came after the announcement of the Electricity Control Board in May this year of an increase of 8.9% for Nampower's bulk electricity tariff, which includes the generation and transmission, resulting in an increase from an average of $1.82 per kilowatt hour to $1.99 per kilowatt hour for the financial year effective 1 July 2023. Speaking at a media briefing in Vintuk, Kavihua said that Namibia, with all its potential to generate electricity and to even export excess electricity to neighboring countries, cannot do so. He said, we are importers of electricity. 71.2% of the electricity that Namibia consumes is from neighboring countries and the rest of the electricity of about 28.8% is produced locally, the bigger portion of it being produced by the Ruakana hydroelectric plant at 24%. He based these figures on the Independent Power Producers Namibia Quarterly Economic Review of March 2020-23. 
Kavehua said that the single most worrisome thing is the absence of evidence indicating that the institutions responsible for the provision of electricity are doing so, or whether whatever they are doing is nearly enough to fill the glaring gaps in the space of local energy provision. He added that it is obvious that over the few decades of his existence, NAM Power has totally proven ineffectual in its duty to generate the electricity from locally available and cheap resources, starting from wind, sun, water and invader bush. The Ministry of Health is planning conversions of ambulances and to purchase more due to an aging fleet. Here's more. The Ministry of Health and Social Services plans to convert 17 vehicles into ambulances and to purchase more vehicles during the current fiscal year. Speaking in a recent interview, Executive Director Ben Nangombe said that 17 vehicles include 11 panel vans and 6 pickups. He said that the Ministry is conducting a verification and fleet assessment exercise across the country to examine the age and condition of its fleet, among other things, in order to inform management of decisions during the formulation of the Ministry's future budget. He said the Ministry's budget for ambulance purchases for the current fiscal year is $24 million, adding that the most recent vehicle procurement was for approximately 60 ambulances in 2016. The COVID-19 pandemic, he said, had a significant impact on the Ministry's fleet of emergency vehicles in terms of wear and tear, forcing the Ministry to find eight cars that were already in operation for conversion into ambulances in 2020. He said that roughly 184 ambulances were discovered to be in operating condition, of which three were in a very good condition. He said the rest were either moderate, fair or in poor condition. Seven ambulances have been allocated to Vintuk Central Hospital, but only five are operational, while three were assigned to the Katatura Intermediate Hospital, of which all are operational. Nangombe went on to say that eight ambulances were sent to Rundu Intermediate Hospital, but only four were operational. Seven ambulances were allocated to Oshakati Intermediate Hospital, but that only two were operational. At Onanjokwe Intermediate Hospital, three ambulances were allocated, one of which has been written off. Nangombe added that the Hubabas District Hospital has 13 ambulances, but only nine are operational. There are 18 ambulances assigned to Morintal District Hospital, however, only nine are operational, and 11 are assigned to Kietman's Whip District Hospital, of which only three are operational. 16 ambulances were assigned to Katima Malilo District Hospital, but just three are operational. Chairperson of the Namibia Airports Company, Liake Angala, has his say on how things have changed post COVID. Here's more. The Namibia Airports Company, or NAC, has made substantial headway in stabilizing its operations, with the company now functioning at roughly 79% of its pre-COVID-19 levels. NAC board chairperson Liake Hangala revealed this last week during an annual general meeting in the capital. Hangala noted that the NAC is committed to improving its airport's infrastructure in order to support government's national development goals and harness the natural resources resulting from recent oil and gas fines as well as the green hydrogen initiatives. Speaking at the event, Angala said that the NAC has achieved the development of their integrated strategic business plan, submitted to and approved by the shareholder of the company's budget and business plan for the 22-23 financial year, infrastructural and service improvements at the airports, spearheading aviation connectivity initiatives, as well as the introduction of stringent cost-cutting measures that led to the current and improved financial performance and standing of the company. Speaking at the same event, Titus Ndove, Executive Director in the Ministry of Finance and Public Enterprises said that um, the Ministry recognizes and applauds the NAC for its increased performance in financial and operations, leadership, governance and compliance. He noted that it is commendable to see a state-owned firm strive for expansion while remaining legally competent. He said that as the shareholder, they are in support of the presented strategic initiatives and will continue to support the NAC to mobilize the necessary resources for the successful implementation of infrastructural improvements at its various airports. The envisaged airport infrastructure developments include the Siakotaku International Airport Congestion Alleviation Project to extend the VIP facilities as well as parking configuration at a cost of 18 million and apron expansion at the same airport to the tune of 100 million which is funded by government over a two-year period. 
Furthermore, discussions are ongoing for the construction of Terminal 3 at Husia Kutaku International Airport and the optional financing structure for the project and the construction of new terminal buildings at Katima Mulilu, Rundu and Luderitz Airports. Yolanda Nell and I recently had the opportunity to travel to Gebabes where we met a number of interesting persons. We also managed to get a number of interesting stories. Here Yolanda spoke to the Vocational Training Centre. Good morning, Mom. First and foremost, I'm Ernst Christian Echab. I'm the project manager of, or doubling in as the acting center manager of Hobabes Professional Training Center. Our center has been established five years ago. In 2016, it was inaugurated by the Honorable Minister Ida, Dr. Ida Kanji Muranki. And 2017, September, it was officially taken over by Namibia Training Authority. It is resorting directly under the training authority and we are offering technical vocational education and training courses here. We have currently air conditioning and refrigeration from level one to level four. Then we have got office administration from level one to level four as well. Then we have got uh, automotive, electrical and electronics from level one to level four as well. And we are Starting as from end of this month, July, we'll be starting with clothing production from level one to level four as well. We'll move over also to welding and metal, metal fabrication from level one to level four. And then we have switched over from automotive electronics to automotive mechatronics from level one to level four. And in the near future, we'll introduce electrical general, we'll introduce solar, we'll introduce agri tivet agriculture, a com combination of crop farming as well as animal husbandry. And then we are planning solar energy also as training. And then also we are planning to have a hostel of 300 trainees here so in the near future. 300 is a lot. <laughs> how, how many um, students do you currently have? Currently we have 100 and... 55 trainees, and with the new intake, we are envisioning to move over to 300 trainees with the new intake. Last year, we had a graduation where we have 155 level three trainees as artisans. We qualified them as artisans. So they are now in job markets looking for job or creating jobs in the country. Why is vocational training so important? Madam, this is the backbone of the country. If you look in the other countries, if you take, for instance, uh, Germany, if you take uh, the Koreans, Asian Tigers, as I normally call them, if you take the European countries or the Americans, that is the backbone of any country. Tibet enables the construction of a country economically, building the roads, building houses, building, uh, let's say, or repairing cars, uh, building, what is it, electrical appliances, installation of electrical appliances in the houses to light up the houses, the streets, and then the electrical appliances in the, in the, in the towns, and then plumbing work to make sure that the electric plumbing work in the houses are maintained or in the hostels or in the offices are maintained and then the mining sector, if you look at, for instance, now our country that is so rich with uh, mineral resources, diamonds, uh, hydrogen that is coming, the oil that is coming, the uranium that we have, the gold that we have, the precious stones that we have, all these things, mining sector is maintained by uh, technical oriented people, technical cadres, artisans, technicians, and, and engineers. So. TVET is very, very important in a country, for a country, for the development of the country, not only for employment purposes, but for the prosperity of a country. How many women are enrolled currently? Ooh, it's, uh, of course, we have less women, but uh, let's say it's uh, 40 to 60. 60% 60 men and female, of, a male, of course, and then 40% and, 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 and female. Of course, ladies are also coming up. That time that all the TV courses were dominated by men or male, it is over. 
that is also infiltrating. And I forgot to mention also tourism sector. It's a very much important sector in our country, and we are also training hospitality trainees uh, to maintain the, 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 the lodges, the hotels, and then, of course, the outlets, the tourism outlets, resorts, and so forth. In our interview segment today, while we were in Kubavis recently, I spoke to the beautiful Svetlana Shehebu of the Goba Lodge. Here's more. Welcome back viewers. With me is um, Svetlana Shehebu. Yes. And she is brand new to the Goba Lodge here in Kobabas. Yes, about a month and a half now. So welcome to Cape County. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> um, Svetlana, tell us a bit about Goba Lodge. What is it that makes Goba Lodge a lovely place to stay at? I mean, we can see it's beautiful, but yes. what, what's the heart of it? Goba Lodge is probably the oldest of, if not one of the oldest lodges in this area. It's over 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lowe started it um, over, I think, 21 years ago now when they took it over and they sort of built it up from scratch. So uh, it being at the heart of, of it being at the heart of Hobabas in terms of um, age-wise, people know where it mm -hmm. is. People know they're familiar with with the staff. They're familiar with the food, so they know exactly that they're getting that authentic cattle country Hobabas taste when they come here. <laughs> Tell me about. Okay, let's stick with the food though. Yes. What is on your menu? Um, a lot of meat. Beef, of beef, of beef. course. Definitely, that is what people <laughs> come for. Our favorite, I think, would be the oxtail poiki. Mm -hmm. That is definitely a favorite. It, it sells out almost instantly. Okay. It sounds delicious. Um, and then in terms of the accommodation, yes. what, what does Goba offer? Goba offers, we offer anywhere from um, luxury rooms. We've got a luxury villa here on the premises. We usually give that out to uh, wedding couples because uh -huh, we host course. weddings here at our conference site. So that is a really cute um, overnight experience for them. And then we've got your standard uh, luxury rooms, double room and single rooms. Mm -hmm. We've got some rest camp rooms as well, which okay. accommodates a communal kitchen and a communal bathroom for those that don't want to spend too much or can't. And then we've got a rest camp area where they can set up, pitch their own tents or park their cars and they can overnight there. So there's really something for everyone. Definitely, 100%. Um, Svetlana, tell me about the staff here. You mentioned earlier that they um, are integral to the, the whole operations here. Yes. Some of the staff members have been with the lodge for a very long time. Some of them were at here from the very beginning, so they were right at inception. So they know the area very well. They know the client by first name basis, especially our restaurant clientele that comes in for dinner. And I think probably the longest some have been here for up to 10, 12 years. Oh, that, that is certainly us, impressive. Yes. yes. And you being new here, what lies ahead for you? Well, for myself, I'm hoping to bring a little bit of a new pizzazz when it comes to the hospitality industry because it's, it's quite rooted in a, in a traditional setup in terms mm -hmm. of a lodging area, it being in cattle country. So we're just hoping to implement um, something that is a little bit in new in terms of attracting a more tourism clientele. Yes. So we want to give them an experience of cattle country. So we're working on marketing aspects as well as just small little things that we can include. Like we've got some game here on the lodge. Oh, you'll have to elaborate on that. Yes, we've got um, a few ostriches here on the on the lodge. We've got some horses as well. Yes. One is wild and one is fairly tame. So okay. Yes. <laughs> but they're friendly. They are definitely Okay, that's friendly. the main thing. Yes, and we've got a lot of buck out here and we've got some oryx as well. And then I just have to ask on the way here, I saw an elephant. Yes. Is that part of your setup here? That is not part of our <laughs> setup. That is part of the Chobaba setup. But the <laughs> elephant does not move. <laughs> no, we saw. <laughs> Yolanda and I were looking at it and we said, what is, is this? It real? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, and you were, when we came now, you were busy uh, working on the website. Yes. Is that one of the changes that you're also implementing? That is one of the changes because Gobble Lodge has n ha does not have their own website at the moment. We're hosting with um, platforms like Booking.com, with um, TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I am working on basically building up a website for the lodge from scratch. And we're hoping that's going to give it a little bit more of a digital footprint so that we can appeal to the more techie market, mm -hmm. the ones that they book immediately online through apps, so that we're trying to bring that in as well. You also mentioned um, the, the wedding venue here. Yes. So um, do you offer this full service? Yes. What does that all include? Yes, we offer a wedding venue. We've got a conference hall on the premises. Mm -hmm. For we how many people? It can accommodate up to 180 people. Okay. So it's quite a large venue and we can accommodate anywhere from seating arrangement to decorating to um, the food as well. So okay. whatever it is that the client requests for the reception, then we can definitely do that. Brilliant. Is there anything else that you feel uh, people out there, both Namibians and foreigners, really should know about Gorba and why they must come here? Mm. I think the one thing I can definitely say is that if you want a traditional experience of Kettle Country, Gobba Lodge is definitely the place to come. We make sure that we get in a premium cuts of beef and that's what people really want to experience when they come here. So that is one thing that we know we'll always be able to, to offer. And if you just want a nice, quiet, serene place while you're in the area or if you're passing through, that will give you an authentic Khobabas experience, then Gobba Lodge is the place to go. Thank you for tuning in today, folks. We've come to the end of our show. We hope to see you again next week. In the meantime, stay safe and stay warm.